Hey, I'm Jisoo, and I'm not playing right now. The reason why I'm not playing right now, and um, this is a post commentary type of video, is because you need all the focus you can get when you're going against those bosses and trying not to die. So we're just going to, you know, see what I did. The thing with Fajar is you don't want you don't want the fight to last too long and if you can you can land those breakfast and it's very very good. Kla 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 breakfast and if you can land it properly you can stun lock him in, in some kind of animation. Boom, I think he's dead there. Yeah. See it was very fast there, it took 40 seconds and you want to be efficient about the breakfast if you can land them. This is very good when he does that, when he leaps back, backwards like that, and he jumps at you with his uh, machete. This is a perfect opportunity to land the back fist. Shan is still the, the easiest boss in the game because now they give him an even more punishable move. That one. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Shan. The good thing is when he starts when he is doing it mid combo, that's good. But when it's when he starts with it, that's very damaging for him. And just like Fajar, you can punish him with backfist. The reason why Fajai is so hard to read is because he can mix you up while doing his combo. As opposed to Shen who has a low you can see coming from like 2 miles away. But the good thing is he is enraged in phase 2 and that was pretty well for him because he, he is not, he, you, you can no longer, no longer stun him when he is in that state and he recovers very fast which means when he goes down he's going to be right back again. And that, I like that about him. The second phase is definitely the his harder version. Because even the, the lows, they come out pretty fast, but you can still stun him. I mean, interrupt him with Black Fist if you can land it properly. I'm so sorry, Shan. Your animations are so slow. Look, this is not this is not okay. Can they do something for my guy? Please? Oh my god, Shan! Please, show me you're not that bad. <laughs> he is that bad. Again? No. I think he dies here, yes. Make Ming for the win. I'm so sorry, Shan, but you remain the, the weakest boss until they decide to do something about you. Next we have Kuroki, and I don't know if it's a bug in the game, but sometimes, ever since the update, when I interact 
with the shrine, my health doesn't replenish. I interacted with the shrine right before the fight and it, my health was still the way it was, so I just had to go in the fight like that and it was fine. Kuroki's first phase is actually the easiest in the game, I think. I mean, when you forget about Shans, I mean, at least for me, because I trained so hard to learn her patterns, by the time I did, I could pretty much read her from a mile away. And I actually think, maybe it's just me, but I think I actually feel like they nerfed her first phase. I understand the decision not to increase to make her first phase difficult because it was already difficult, but I feel like they nerfed it. The good thing is, she has two variations for that move. She can end it in two different ways, so she can still mix you up, but it's, the potential is pretty low. So even with that health, the, redu the reduced health, I was actually doing fine. I mean, whatever fine means. So, in her second phase, Kuroki recovers so fast that one of the only way for now, especially for me, to punish her is to use Trip Kick. Because she recovers so fast, it's insane. You just have to, right after you dodge, have to hit her once and then chain a directional throw or a push because she's going to recover in half a second. That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Making sure we damage that structure. See, she already she already recovered. I used to be able to do that for three or four seconds before. And I found a way, I need to try it out more, but I found a way to make her fake her dash, her very high supersonic dash you do not want to take. See, she doesn't even let you hit her once after you dodge. She's really fast. I think she's dead. Yeah, she's dead. Let's go. It would actually be a nightmare to fight her without using focus attacks because you just can't get in. And she's so good at graying away, that's why they, they gave her such a big stage. So right here, just stay. This distance right here is very good for you. You can see the point coming and you can parry that. I prefer dodging the sweep because the timing is so slow, most of the time I end up just get, getting hit. Flowing Claw is very good if you want to break an opponent's guard. Even, in, even if they block, she's going to just take massive damage. See, right here, every time I dodge, I'm making sure I close the distance just because I want to see the bunk coming and I want, I want it to land pretty fast. 
I don't want to say too. I don't want to stay too far from her. Because when when you're too far, the timing is so off. You're going to get hit almost every time. So stay in range, but not too close. I feel like Crookfoot is the skill designed to counter Yang because that's mostly how you're going to get some hits and especially when he starts, you know, aggressing you. Very Impact and Crookfoot. Those are your best friends for this fight. The fight against Yang is so intense, at least for me, that he didn't even have time to taunt me. We are in this together. We are focused on destroying each other. And I released shortly a video about every single bosses because right now it's not optimal yet. I just wanted to see if it was possible and how long it would take to complete, I mean, to, to beat the bosses in a higher difficulty at age 20. It's possible, it's doable, it's not optimal yet, but hey. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching and yeah, Fajar it truly is a pain in the ass and oh my god. Yang can kill you pretty fast. I'll tell you more about all those things very soon. Bye bye and I don't know, be well.